Hello, Earth Signs. It's me. I have went ahead and pulled these because it takes forever. That way we're not 20 minutes in of me shuffling. So anyways, this is for Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus in general. Uh, let's see what we have. The first one is, um, I'm getting to read it right now. Oh, a collective of pixies. That's okay. I want to draw. You can see here. And it's, uh, it's about participating and willing to participate and doing what you got to do. And one of those things just needs to be to dance so you can get things done. It's like when you move that energy. Like you can do things properly. At proper time, proper pace. <sighs> These are little energetic beings to help the world turn in like the right speed. Um, if you were to like folklore or whatever. Um, yeah, like they're like physicists keep changing their minds about things. And these guys keep dancing and it just keeps turning. Doesn't everything doesn't need um, an explanation on the reality on the physical plane. But it's like you got to treat your duty as something worth doing instead of boring and oppressive um like a merry heart makes light work and we do have a choice about how we do anything and you can literally make a game of it like if when i would train people at work um I would kind of put that spit on it, right? Like how much can you make today? How many people can you make happy? How many good reviews can you get? It really does challenge people. It doesn't have to be dull and boring and, and tedious. It's really the attitude towards something to give it a different feeling, a different energy. And the results end up different, you know? And it's like you literally have the power to make the world a better place or worse right now with that. And it's like the awareness um, of approaching things and with a different outlook, right? A different outlook. Because if the job has to get done, you might as well do it, you know, instead of like, oh, because that takes longer and it, it drugs on and ugh. That's, that's what they're saying. And then we have the loam. I don't know if I'm saying that right. The, the loam. The loam. And that's unconditional giving and receiving and she's sitting on her friend and she's just like waiting for something. And he's happy to be assistance and it's very charitable soul. And it's like an old soul. And it's like knowing the joy of giving without that expectation of a return. But we have to learn to practice that for ourselves as well. Like we have to have a return at some point. It's usually going to come from the least expected, like, source. Like, I'm not even sure she's aware. Her friend is very happy to have her company because she's just gazing off. <sighs> but it's like, we've been given the earth, the sun, the stars, the moon, flowers, things to eat, friends. And it's like, we don't think we can ever repay those certain things, but we can. And this just has like, maybe someone is thinking that, oh my God, if they do this for me, like, how am I going to repay them? And sometimes they just need a friend instead of being energetically depleted all the time. You know, you need to put your energy into things that are naturally flowing where they like give back <sighs> and she looks kind of passive here but she's watching you know and, it, and it's like she's waiting like what is the right place what is the right time 
So this is being like stuck and blocked in a situation depending on how you're looking at what has to be done. And you need to stop focusing on what you are trying to accomplish and just kind of freely give energy in other places that will give back to you for like this unconditional feeling, especially around the holiday times. Like uh, go to your elderly neighbor and help them or make some soup or um, just help someone like a needy stranger, an animal. Even if you think you can't afford it, you could literally take it somewhere to someone who could help it more, you know? Or you got 50 cents, give it to the beggar. Things come back in ways that you just didn't know. But it's like, you could also be giving too much. And you gotta, you gotta attend to your own needs for a minute. And it's like you're refusing to receive what the Spirit's trying to give you. And that's why you're like, I'm bored, I guess? And they're, and they're trying to say, like, you're bored because you've depleted your energy and you're waiting for something to shift. But really, it's, you have the support of the universe. Like, and the world's going to keep spinning. Like, these pixies are over here doing their dance and that's what they do every day. They're, they know what their role is. You know what your role is, but... Her wings are literally destroyed. Wow, okay. Destroy, destroy. Where is... It's like she knows she's gifted and stuff. She's just waiting for someone who matches, matches them. Gender neutral, giving Satan, but... Like, okay, is someone going to join me? Nine of Cups. The Moon. So you did just show up in the Water Signs reading. That's why I'm doing Earth now. You are... Someone's literal wish. But, yep. But, that's the perfect time, the perfect place, and things will happen. And it's like you know they're going to happen, and that's why you are a standstill. There's more to accomplish and there is no movement right now, but it's like you guys are connected and you feel that and you, you, yeah. And it's like you could look at this time as passing time and losing time and, you know, like what's going to give. Or you could think of this as a time to accomplish more things for yourself before you guys come into unity, right? There's a sadness here. Of how things didn't pan out. And she feels like she is completely alone and doing the same thing repetitively and doesn't realize the support system is very sturdy under her. Right? Friends, cooperation, creative projects could turn things into a different like viewpoint instead of focusing on what wasn't accomplished or what they could be doing all that time lost what came out the will of fortune right it's always a never ending cycle so when I was younger there was a very powerful woman and she said you're not going to understand this now I was 12 she didn't have tarot cards or nothing she said, your life is literally the will of fortune. Later to come find out, I have many of these. Like, I am the will of fortune card in karmic numbers. Um, and the magician on the karmic scale. But I represent the empress and the hierophant in traditional sense, right? She's like, your life will always be up and down, kid. Up and down destruction. 
destruction and then like the uplift it. So I think this is more of the time of the down, even though it's not like completely down, before it comes back up in about five weeks. Five to six weeks, exactly. We have the tower before the n another destruction um, hits us to shake our foundation of boredom, of, uh, of waiting, of stifling. And the fool, he was sticking out there. Like, and it's funny because he really was sticking out. You didn't see that, but look at his stance. Then we start again. But it's always with a lighter heart, right? We're always in search of something. Um, and this tells me that it is coming. Look at that. The universe and the Ten of Swords. That is a completion. A full on completion and the two of cups is under that and we begin anew whether whatever that is that we're beginning anew it's coming I know I've been saying that for a while with the earth signs but I literally just gave you a timestamp here it's five to six weeks five to six weeks guys and I am gonna leave it at that